Okay, I'm going to have to trim this, but let me start off this way. So I'm going to go through and just name a few of the highlights that I got from this interview. Thank you both for being here. And uh, first of all, how are you both doing? I'm doing better each day, um, slowly but surely, just uh, healing physically and mentally. The next question should have been, and where have you been for the past several days? Yeah, I imagine. I imagine that, that you relived that a lot. Oh, she didn't choose that question. And how are you doing, Stephen? Because we know you've been on the scene like your name's been thrown out in the press as someone who's pivotal, just like Jesus Compost. Yeah, it hasn't. And I actually think I understand why they brought him in, too, which is funny because on my last video regarding, I had made some sort of comment and someone had corrected me. And it dawned on me then why they brought, why, why, why bring Stephen Shuck in? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you in a second. Okay, so Jesus, you're the security officer, and in, uh, in, uh, in, and you. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, did you like that? She did not want to say who he was a security officer for. She did not want to name MGM. She did not want to name any security company. She didn't, and so she just went right through that. Did you catch that? When a door is left open for a certain amount of time, you're, you're supposed to go check on it, right? Yeah. So yeah. The, the leading questions, instead of asking him questions, she's basically giving the answers and then putting a question mark, like she's playing Jeopardy. Making sure that uh, uh, to secure them, or if they've already been secured, just uh, making that check on the doors okay so you so you know he's given this answer back you listen to his terminology what he's doing is he's given a very generic answer back to um what you would do what one would do when that alarm would go off or when they would be alerted to go have to check on something check on a door you were going up the fire escape to get there uh via the stairwell mm -hmm. um Okay, right. So in that case, now would be a good uh, time to say, what were you doing on the 31st floor? Like, what were you doing at the moment that you were signaled? That would be a very legitimate question. Uh, when I approached the door, uh, it didn't open. And it, it was okay, let's talk about when he approached the door because... You know, it's still kind of like foggy, which is exactly what they're trying to do is make it very sketchy and foggy when the gunfire started. Now, I, I really don't even know where we are, like with the official timeline. Was he was there now not firing until Jesus was shot? So the firing didn't start until after Jesus was shot. Is that is that like the narrative? Is that the official narrative now? Because um Obviously, he would have heard something going on, but Ellen kind of muddles over that too. You'll see that in a second, which is going to explain why Stephen is on the scene too. Just stay with me. Fucked off, so I had to reroute. Um, is that a normal thing that the door at the fire escape, or the stairwell, would be blocked off? No, they're always supposed to remain open. Right. And so um, after I would drop down and then came back through the hallway. So if he was on, this is another question, if he was on the 31st floor and all of those doors are always open, wouldn't it make sense for him to approach that closed door from the stairwell itself? Why wouldn't he check on that going into the stairwell? If you're checking on a stairwell door and you're on a for whatever reason, let's just say you're on for legitimate reasons, you're on the 31st floor and you're getting an alarm for the floor right above you. Wouldn't you take the stairwell to go up there or would you come down from all the way down the other side? No, I think you would take the stairwell. You would take the stairwell to go up and check the stairwell, no? Uh, and then I approached the 
room. You got into the door. Yeah, there's the lobby pats. Yeah, I, I, I'm just going to acknowledge that one time. And there was a metal bracket holding the door in place. Right. So what Q. We're talking about here, just oh, she didn't pick up the Kleenex yet. Okay, so I like the diagram. This is so well prepared. I wonder who prepared that for Ellen. Uh, yeah, I wonder who decided that this was going to be the way that this witness, witness to this mass murder, a witness to a mass murder. Just think about this. A witness to a mass murder, like no, no, most notorious in history, a couple weeks afterwards pops up on a talk show. Has there ever, I mean, I mean ever, ever, like ever, ever, been a time when that's happened? Ever. Obviously, it would be on a much smaller scale because this is unprecedented, this type of um, assassination on Americans, an assault, an assassination, a terror threat on Americans. So everybody is clear. Okay, so this is where the, the hotel room was, where the shooter was. This is the stairway, where, and this door here was blocked, and you didn't know. Yeah, so here, Ellen, you're coming down, you're coming down from here. She's pointing right here. So let me just ask, why not, Mr. Security Officer? Why not come up from here? Why not come up from here? Because you were on the 31st floor, weren't you? You're going to come, you look like you'd have taken the shortcut. So you had to come up through here and check that. And then I could see you saying, then you wanted to find out what was wrong with it. So you approached this way and came through here. Okay, so here's why I think that this false flag, not saying that nobody was killed. That's, that's, um, I, and I've explained that before, but just in brief, false flag does not mean that nobody dies, that nobody gets hurt. It just simply means that it is, the story that they're giving you is not what it is. And it's usually for a political agenda to push a certain um, agenda, to push a certain point, to push a certain law, to push a certain change. I think that this was such a clusterfuck because the Trump administration was not on board with it or because there's so much collusion and and in every in all aspects of the government. It's not just the Dems. It's not. Okay, it's in, through the whole entire government. You know, you don't, you, you don't really, I don't think that Trump knows who he can trust. I just want to know that I can trust him, okay? Because then he will have loyal people under him. He will. Fewer than the disloyal ones, I believe, by far. But did the Trump administration know about it? I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know if they knew or not. But what I do think is that there was someone who let's call let's call Trump team B. No, let's call Trump team A. I've already fucked that up. Let's call Trump team A. And let's call the typical stagers of these false flags team B. Team B is used to people from the presidential uh, segments team A to acknowledge these things they have to have some people on that team to let things go and to just make sure things are because these these things aren't done just like you don't plan this on a monday from the following friday you're talking about months and months and months if you know several months if not more longer than years that things are planned so let's just say that someone on team a was a, like a double agent, meaning that they were going to go along with this, but they really weren't going to, but they were acting like they were on team B and really weren't. And that's, that's the element that, and this is, this is why it's great to have Trump as president, no matter what, no matter what you're going to say about not liking Trump and him not being the best selection of the president or whatever. He is breaking up the system that has been in place, that has been being perfected for years. And it's a, a system of tyranny against Americans. 
It's against our freedoms. It is against our rights. It is against our individualities. Is it against our advancement as the world advances, technologically speaking, and so forth? When we're given things, it's to monitor us. It is to keep us under watch. It is to just make sure that, I mean, we're given a cracker in a maze, not because they're trying to feed us, but because they're trying to train us. And I believe this is, I believe this was like this too. It's like a, tra it's like we're being MK ultra trained, which will bring me to, to uh, Stephen Shook in just a second, but let me just continue. I know that until you came up in the, in, through the elevator and went through this door and saw that there was something blocking that door. And, and when you saw that, did you think that's weird? Why would somebody put brackets on it? Okay. So Ellen's been doing interviews like this for quite a few years, so I'm pretty sure that she understands what the uh, ask a question, get an answer is, instead of give an answer to every non-question that you're, that you're setting up. If, if everyone doesn't see through this as the most contrived interview of the century, and the fact that she's even really allowed, I mean... I don't even even know how she's allowed to sit here and ask him these questions about this. If this is not, this should be an FBI investigation, shouldn't it? Shouldn't this be an FBI investigation right now? Shouldn't he be in part of this? I mean, people were people were get, allegedly they had their cell phones taken, they had all footage erased because it was under FBI information. So they weren't allowed to go ahead and do anything about that. They weren't allowed to say anything. They were allowed. But now Jesus can be on Ellen and be just can confirming or denying whatever information makes no sense completely illogical door. yeah that was, that was just uh, out of the ordinary that was the moment. beginning yeah okay and then the beginning i mean at the beginning of what the beginning of when you thought something was wrong because no shots were being fired up until that point because you were completely clueless as to whatever else might have been going on up until that point and do we notice that She's not giving any specific times. They're all aware that there is a huge discrepancy in time. But yet, during this whole interview, you'll see that there is no mention to specify time. You walk out of this, and this just slams? Um, well, when I was in between that area, I was calling in uh, security dispatch to get transfer to engineering. Uh, they didn't know anything about it, so... Uh, they you know, there's something about that that... That seems, yeah, I don't know. The dispatch and engineer to uh, go uh, to verify what that was. That's when you got called. Yeah. Okay. And at that yes. time I heard uh, what I assumed it was drilling sounds. Okay, drilling. See, now, he had obviously made statements prior that were noted and it let out about the drilling. And maybe Jesus made a mistake. Maybe Jesus disappeared and they had to bring back Jesus because I, this guy looks like he's packed on about 40 pounds and I didn't want to talk about weight gain or whatever, but seriously, uh, he, this is not the same picture of the other person that they've been showing, you know, with the award, but I don't even think that award was for anything related to this. I have to go back and, and listen. I know there was discrepancy in that, but um, yeah, drilling, drilling. Gunshots, but you thought it was just drilling sounds. At first, uh, I think it was just drilling sounds. Right. So, did you notice that that wasn't really answered? She said they were gunshots, but you thought they were just drilling sounds, and he kind of skirted around that, which makes me think Jesus isn't quite as dumb as he looks. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, some of you are going to be like, "You're a monster for saying that." No. You know. The monsters are who set all this up. The monsters are who is lying to us now. The monsters are who are, is forcing everyday fucking Americans to be like I am right now, the ones who give a shit, to pay attention and, and ask questions, to be like, what the fuck is going on? Those are the monsters. Now, he answered that question in a very obscure way. Did you catch that? I'm, I'm going to go back. They were gunshots, but you thought... It was just drilling sounds. At first, uh, I think it was just drilling sounds. Right. So at first, he thinks it was just drilling sounds. So is that to insinuate that at first, 
it was just drilling sounds because they're, they later then said that Paddock was drilling in his room because he had several days to prepare, uh, but yet he starts drilling when he's actively carrying out the shooting. So, yeah, that's how he leaves that. So then at, at what point did you get shot? What happens here? Um, as that door's closing and it's so heavy, uh, it'll, it'll slam. I'm walking down this way, and I believe that's what um, caught uh, the shooter's attention. Um, as I was walking down... I so he um, didn't catch the shooter's attention when he went when he went in when he went down to check it because if they're saying that paddock wasn't shooting at that time what was he doing i mean he obviously was kind of aware of what was going on right he had the camera set up right so he didn't you know he caught his attention with someone will say oh because the door slammed because these people who had to come up with this bullshit lie for him they're not stupid no but they have to do cover-ups because the one thing we can guarantee is that people are always going to make mistakes. And I think Jesus made a few. I wonder if Jesus was was one of the guys that were working with Paddock. You know, he was assigned to that floor. He was assigned with Paddock to that floor to carry it out. And a couple others were maybe assigned somewhere else. A couple others maybe on the ground. Um, I heard rapid fire. And... At first, I, I took cover. I felt a burning sensation. I went to go lift my pant leg up, and I saw the blood. That's when I called it in on my radio that shots have been fired. Okay, so what kind of gun was this paddock using? Um, in he went to lift his pant leg up because he felt a burning sensation. Now, and I, I am not a guns expert, but I'm thinking that the the firearms that were being used. He wouldn't have had, he, his pant leg, he would have had seen, like the pant leg would have been gone. Like where's, where was he shot at specifically? Where specifically was he shot? Was he shot near upper thigh? Was he shot in kneecap area? Was he shot in the, in the, I don't even know where he was shot. Like where was he lifting up to look? It's general questions. I think all these questions are so important. Like where were you shot, Jesus, specifically? And I was going to say that I was hit. But I uh, got all over my cell phone just to clear that radio traffic for they can coordinate uh, the, the rest of the call. Because it, so, it takes two seconds to say I'm hit. Less than two seconds. That's a lie. That's a lie. And it's almost as though Ellen has to know this. She has to know this. So then, Ellen, you're an accessory. You're an accessory to obstruction right now. If this were actually being carried out like a real federal investigation and it should be. It should be being investigated. Then this makes her an accessory. It does. She's putting herself right in this. So, it, so he shot, you didn't even know, he shot through this door, right? Yeah, from behind the door. I didn't know how he was shooting, Yeah. Uh, but he shot out. Right, so you didn't even know it was coming from here. So it's, Steve, it's Steven, at this point, so you're called up. You just think that you're coming to look at a door that's been blocked in the fire well, right? Yeah. I didn't think anything uh, out, of, out of the ordinary at the time. It came from a higher floor and came down on us. And what was he doing on the higher floor? Does he reside on the higher floor? And can he concur then that there were no shots fired at that point? Did he hear shots? Oh, oh, this is what brings us to why I believe they brought Stephen Shook in on it. It was quiet at this time. It was quiet at this time. So that means that there was a discharge of fire, obviously, because he had been shot, right? Jesus has been shot. And they said that there was 200, 200 rounds fired at Jesus. So I'd like to know just how insulated. I mean, I've been to Vegas. I've been in the Mandalay Bay. I don't, I, it's insulated. I'd like to know if it's that well insulated that you can't be firing off these types of assault rifles, 200 rounds, and him coming down and have be totally clueless and not hear anything. Jesus was uh, towards the end of the hallway, but I didn't, I didn't know at that time. I thought I saw someone uh, like pop out of the cubby, and I kept walking, and you know, once I got more than halfway, 
started to hear shooting, and I thought, at the time I didn't know it was shooting, I thought it was jackhammer. Okay, so then I'm confused. So he was, how quick is this guy? Like, I don't know, these engineers of the building, they are really quick, man. That's like a stat, because he had just called in, right? He had just called in about the door. What's the time frame between Jesus calling in and them dispatching the engineer? Um, that seems like one of those calls that they'll get to, you know, sometime, not within the next 38 seconds. So then now, because what he's saying now insinuates that maybe he hasn't. So no shots had been fired yet because now he hears gunfire. But listen, listen to what he says right here. Yeah, and he wouldn't be taking a call like this at that time at night either to go check on a door as the engineer for the Mandalay Bay. This is just such a ridiculous story. Okay, so when he said take cover, take cover, was he already hit? That's what I want to know. I want to know if when... Hey, Zeus said, take cover, take cover. Was he already hit? Because we have so many things going on. He made the call about the door. They get this guy, Stephen, involved. Stephen comes down, but he doesn't hear anything until the shots start coming, and then he thinks it's a jackhammer. Now, this is where the MK Ultra comes in and why I think they put him in here, because... I believe that the story was maybe supposed to be a jackhammer at all times, and then maybe Jesus uh, said drilling, and nobody in their fucking right mind would think that there's anything about a drill that sounds like on fire ever, ever. Nobody would think that. Nobody would think that, unless you f screwed up what you were uh, supposed to memorize, okay? So then they can't kill I mean, it's probably pretty risky to kill Jesus for whatever reason at this point in the operation because there's enough lies out there. Now, they're going to keep him alive, right, because they want to make sure that it looks whatever way they think they want to make it turn out. But they're going to bring this guy, Stephen, in on it, and they're going to say, you're going to say you're part of the seal, and you're going to use jackhammering. Because what you're left with, and this is really what I was left with, I was left with thinking jackhammering. They're up there thinking, it's kind of like the drilling almost, you almost can forget that Jesus says the drilling because Stephen comes up behind him and says the jackhammering, which, yes, in some regards, you know, could possibly, if you're, you know, not used to maybe any sort of industrial in, uh, noise, you could perhaps think that maybe there was some sort of uh, comparison, perhaps. You could feel the pressure going past you just even being able So those were parts of the 200 bullets. So then the gunfire, th that whole story, no way. He's, was Jesus hit whenever he told him to take cover or not? Because if he had been hit, if he was hit whenever he told him to take fire, then, then, um, then Stephen's lying. Then Stephen's lying because he would have heard the gunfire going off. He would have heard that for 200 rounds. Because he would have had to, I think there was an, another, um, with, the, with the guns that he was using, he would have had to reload. There would have been, I think, a nine second, there was another analysis, and I'll post a link in the description box to that, to show, like, he would have had to take, a, I think it, you know, would have taken him a few seconds to stop and then unload another um, 100 rounds. Was he shot at that time? <laughs> there are no questions being asked. She says, mm hmm. Um, shortly after, that's when Stephen was approaching. And I told yeah, and they're showing Stephen here and Jesus here. So obviously, obviously, he's already been shot when he says this because he's all the way made it back, all the way down the hallway, you know. Right. Wow. 
so, and, and I mean, it, really, he saved your life. And he saved the, also the woman that came out of the, the door to, to... And this is where Ellen just kind of takes it and she hijacks this into um, the second or additional phase of the MK Ultra programming, which is just like, he's a hero. He's a hero. He's a hero. Shaping the narrative, telling people what they should believe. I am sure with applause going in their little audience for everyone to clap and just be like, yes, 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 because that's what they're doing, because they want to mold you so that you will believe what the way they want, you'll believe it the way they want you to believe it. I don't doubt that he doesn't, <laughs> could you imagine that kind of a lie? Say, let's just hypothetically, hypothetically say it's a lie. Could you imagine that type of lie? First of all, you know, thank you so much for being here. And, and I know that you've had so many people asking for you to tell the story and to talk about this. And I understand your reluctance because you just want this to be over. So you're talking about it now and then you're not going to talk about it again. And I don't blame you because why? Isn't that nice to be in up to your eyeballs in this and you don't have to talk about it again. You can come on The Ellen Show, and we can just present it exactly how we want, and you'll never have to talk about it again. Isn't that nice? Isn't it? I relive this over and over again, but it's helpful for people to understand what a hero you are. Oh, it's helpful, Ellen. Being shot in the leg saved so many people's lives, and instead of you just getting out of there, you saved Stephen's life, you saved that woman's life, and who knows how many Okay, so I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll repost this link. And so you can watch the rest. It's just a couple more minutes long. They're going to give them some money. They're going to just continue giving the accolades. And I really don't know how much Ellen thinks she knows. And it's beyond me that um, there's going to be this sort of denial. And there's going to be this sort of uh, coldness. Now... You know, I'm not going to speculate on how much of a false flag this was and who really died and what kind of previous lives they had because I really do believe there have been people in this event that did lose their life. I know there's been people that have been injured. I absolutely know that there's been people that have been traumatized. And I believe that this is just tyranny against the American people. For, you know, President Trump to sit there and say that he's going, you know, how about Bashir al-Assad being a bad man, and that he may be, saying that he gasses his own people, that always sounded really kind of weird to me. Like, why are you going to gas your own people? Why, what gives, what, why would they do that? But you know what? Someone may, un, same, someone could say the same thing about this right here. Why would the government, why would the government do this to their own people? Control. That's why. To control. Maybe to study people, human behavior, depopulation. It's another layer of the MK Ultra programming. You know, insurance monies. Who knows? Like, there's, it could be endless. Lots of reasons. It's not just one reason. All right. Um, this has probably been a really long video. And I'm going to try and upload this and use my editor. I'm still working on it. I do have these new headphones. They kind of give me a little bit of a headache, but I think that the audio will be clear, and um, that would be good. I hope everybody has a good night. You can post your comments, too, to tell me what you think about anything that I kind of shouted out. I'm not like an investigator. You know, I ask a lot of questions, and the questions I ask aren't rocket science. They're pretty basic. All right, have a good night. Bye.